And following attempts to loot the NYSE camp in Abuja, the National Youth Service Scheme, NYSE, has directed its state coordinators to liaise with security agencies in their respective states to beef up security to warn of potential attacks on the camps by hoodlums who might be invading them in search of hidden COVID-19 palliatives. The Katsina State Coordinator of the NYSC, Yaya Ahijo, said the measure has become necessary in a view of the growing attacks on NYSC orientation camps already recorded in the FCT, Cross River and Adamawa State. Uh, joining us live is uh, Chidi Okereke, uh, Creative uh, Director of Devon Troy Copper, uh, Digital Entrepreneur also. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, okay, Mr. Okereke. Hi, good morning. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. I'm, I'm going to you know, ask about the narrative that the NSARS protesters and the protests in general should be blamed for the continued unrest um, across the country. Do you agree with that? Absolutely not. I do not agree that the, that the protest or the protesters are responsible for everything that is happening. Um, the, the government has a responsibility to protect lives and properties regardless of anything. Um, as far as the protests were peaceful throughout the duration of the protest, as far as that was the case, and all the all the um, all the activities, all the activities of um, violence, all the people that try to disrupt this are either state sponsored talks or um, security agencies. As far as that is the case, then there's absolutely no reason why anybody should say that the protests are the reason why all these things are happening. The government has the duty. Law enforcement has law enforcement has a duty to protect lives and properties. And if they fail to fulfill that duty, then they are they are actually breaking the law, and then they should face the consequences of their actions and inactions. So we're not responsible for it. The protests are not responsible for it. The government, law enforcement, is to blame. If, if the government um, denies you know, allegations like the one you've just made of uh, sponsoring thugs and sponsoring um, violence across the country. Um, how then would you differentiate between those people who were protesting for the end of the special anti-robbery squad and those who, um, of course, went, you know, violent um, at some point? It's, it's not a matter of what the government denies or what they do not deny. The government lies. The government has lied over time. The government said they that this has us um, how many times in how many years that they did not demand SARS. Even now, there have been reports that SARS are still on the streets. Um, so so the, government, the government has lost all credibility. The government has lost the trust of everybody. So it's a matter of what they say or what they do not say. Now, if we're talking in technical terms, Anybody who has eyes, who, are, who, has, um, who has ears, who has, who has um, who's bright, would see that the protests, people who are protesting are very, very different from the people who are causing all these things. First of all, protesters have designated places where they're protesting. Their agitations. Around the, they move around together. So, Go ahead, please. Yeah, okay, so when they move around, they move around together. Um, they have placards, they have a message, they have a common, they have a common demand. They are not looting, they are not um, committing arson, they are not, they are, they are keeping, I mean, they are not breaking rules and everything, rules that are not rules of um, engagement during protests and everything. So they, it, it, it is very, very obvious that people who are causing all the disruption and doing all that, they are very, 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 very different from people who are peacefully protesting. Um, the the uh, some people call it the ground zero, but the most popular place the protest had, the protest happened, which is the Lekki Toll Gate. Twelve days, twelve days, no incidents happened. It was peaceful all through. So there's 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 really no reason why um, anybody should look at both parties, look at all the parties who are causing all these things and, and want to compare them with protesters. They are very very different from us. Look, feel, um, okay. attitude, behavior, and everything. All right, Mr. Kerke, how, how then do you explain um, the looting, the search for warehouses across the country, the um, pulling down of, of you know, buildings you know, you know, in certain parts of the country in search for more palliatives? Um, what exactly brought you know, this into the discussion and into you know, the, the whole narrative with regards to protests? 
So, uh, and this is me speaking for myself. There are excuses for it, and, and I'm going to try to explain it, but I need to categorically state that I do not personally endorse any form of looting, whether it's um, um, palliatives that are meant for people that should have been distributed rightfully, or um, looting of other people's businesses or government agencies or government buildings and all that. Um, but then this is a consequence of the system we're in. Uh, we, 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 are, we are still in a pandemic as a matter of fact, um, but at some point it was really, really deep how, how deep the pandemic was. People couldn't go out, some people couldn't earn a living, people were hungry, people were dying. Yet, yet some people who were, who had gotten donations from private, that's, that's the amazing thing. These donations came from private organizations, COVID came from private organizations and then um, together with, of course, some public funds. Because whatever the government brings to the table is also public funds as well. So basically, the public funded these, these palliatives and then some people had the temerity, they had the audacity to keep it in, keep it waiting for what rainy day instead of distributing it where people are dying. It's a consequence of how, how unfortunate the system is. Um, so while I do not endorse, while I totally condemn all forms of looting, this is this is a consequence of how irresponsible the government has been. It is a consequence of how 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 greedy some people like. I mean, a politician said he was saving palliatives to distribute on his birthday. This is not your personal property, for God's sake. So it is it is really really unfortunate that it got to this. It's really really. I mean, it goes to show how. How there's so much hunger, so much poverty in the land. I mean, there is greed as well. There is greed as well. But let us be honest: the major driver, the major driver of all those looting, looting of palliatives, is that people just want to eat. People, I mean, there, there was, I mean, there was a video yesterday or two days ago about uh, of uh, an NCDC a, a security agency agent who was who was who also had to spill. I mean, you would see how how he he looked ashamed, like he he paused for a bit, and then and then. He decided, you know what, my shame is nothing compared to my hunger. And then he carried on. That's just to show you how much, how distributed this hunger is. I mean, Nigeria is, Nigeria is still the poverty capital of the world. So this is actually an expected consequence. Again, again, I do not endorse it. There is a measure of greed. Um, a greed, um, greed, greed is a driver. It's also a driver of the entire thing. But to be honest, hunger is the major driver of the thing. And the fact that so people decided to keep what was meant for them to keep instead of distributing it to the people it was meant for. It's, it's really sad. All right. And of course, um, in the words of uh, Femi Falano, S-A-N, how do you hoard indomine? Uh, I saw that yesterday. But I, I, I want to move somewhere else. The uh, protests have continued outside Nigeria. Um, if you've been following on social media, you would have seen in Indonesia, in the U.S., in Canada, in numerous places across the world. Um, what would you say have been some of the biggest gains of the protests so far? So, um, I mean, there's definitely a lot of gains. Um, the fact that the world has seen what is happening. Um, this is the first time young people are coming together to decide their fate. Um, it's, it's, it has shown us the power of, of us uniting. And uniting despite the fact that people have tried to bring in tribal and religious angles to the entire thing. Young people have largely come together and said, we are tired of this thing that is happening to us. We are saying no to it. And diaspora carrying on, um, and despite the fact that Nigeria has kind of slowed down. I mean, I, I don't call it, the protests have not ended in Nigeria. The protests are just on hold because you know, we're trying to rebuild, re-strategize and do all that. So it's just on hold for now. Um, but other parts of the world are carrying the torch um, because, because um, the diaspora knows that um, when, when, when we can't do it, they have to you know, um, raise their voices. So NSAS is not something anybody who's politically conscious around the world would see and not have an idea what it actually means for us. Um, all the all the major all the major media houses carried it. All the all the genres from entertainment to news and politics to commerce, everybody has carried it. Um, and the Nigerian, compared to other times when they just say, okay, we've disbanded them, it is it's a bit different now. Human rights judicial panels are being formed in states. I mean, the Lagos State Judicial Panel sat yesterday, so you see that there's a there's there's a difference between now and before. It is not as fast as we want it. What happened in Lekki is still, still um, a, a problem that I, I, 
I'm not going to stop talking about until somebody takes responsibility and justice is felt. Um, but it is a bit different from what has happened in the past because young people decided, you know what, we're done. We're done. We're no longer taking all this. And then they decided to stand up for their rights. So there's been some wins. It's not as much as we want, but there has been some wins. Is that enough? And, and also, how do you feel the protesters, the, the NSAS protests now, you know, protesters rather, the, the peaceful ones, as you've described, um, can continue to share their views and seek justice and, and, of course, ask government to do like they've asked without being um, um, taken away or, well, blown away with the destruction and the looting and those who have uh, decided to be violent. How do you think that these two divides can come together? Uh, okay, so the first thing for me, and again, I speak for myself, um, and maybe a group of people who, who start aligning with mine, because again, the protests have been largely decentralized. Nobody has command or control of everything. They have been key figures. They have been key figures who have co coordinated and you know, done, done a fantastic job putting the entire thing together and sustaining it for them. Um, I can only speak for myself and a group of people like, you know, who listen to me or a group of people who have come, come to agreement to me. Um, we, are, we, are, we are at the consolidation stage. We're trying to bring everybody together. And, and again, it's not, not about, you know, having leaders or anything. It's about having one voice, one strong demand. And then we decide the, the, the way forward. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd lean more on the advocacy side. I'd lean more on the long-term plan, which is to, I mean, which is to end bad governance. Um, I'd lean more towards um, um, peaceful ways and then um, strong ways to not necessarily physically demand for what we want. But if it means if at some point we have to get back to the streets, um, then we're going, to, we're going to have to do it. We're going to have to do it because this is like a fight for our lives. At this point, this is a fight for our lives. I, don't, I personally do not like it. I find no joy in, in putting myself in harm's way because every time I went out on the street, I kept, people kept telling me that, you know, this might be your last. Um, at the lucky protest that day, I was there and then I left just before the whole shooting and everything happened. So I've, I've been so close to death. A lot of people have actually died um, doing this. Um, so it is, not, it is not something we take pleasure. It's not something we, we necessarily like. But the government has to do what the government has to do. Um, they started something. We have started something. The judicial panels have been set up. Let's watch. Let's monitor. Let's see if they're actually about the if they're actually about that life. If they are going to keep their to their own part of the deal. If they do, and then they truly disband these units, and then there's there's reform in the police. I mean, what's the point anymore? We just organize for leadership because at the end of the day, bad governance has to end as well. Yeah, so that's, what, that's what I'm what I'm trying to so get if the government, you know, does right, does very, very right. If lucky if we find closure. I mean, we can't necessarily find closure. When we say closure, I mean, we find the perpetrators. We find the perpetrators. Who, if there's a confirmation, if there's an admittance of guilt by the parties who were involved in the lucky uh, massacre and everything, then we know that at least we are getting somewhere. So, yeah. Hold on, Mr. Okay, okay. What I'm what I'm trying to okay. find out. Hold on, please. What I'm trying to find out is you've you've just mentioned that if it requires going back to the streets, that you, um, you will. Um, but there is a factor here, and that is something you also mentioned, that thugs could be sponsored to disrupt the protest. Um, looters have also taken advantage of, well, you know, the idea of a protest you know, and uh, a curfew at some point. How do you go back to the streets um, without those factors coming into play again? So when we when when we now when we align when we all properly align and have one voice, yeah, there's going to be a, a proper method of you know protesting together. If, for example, and this is me saying, for example, I'm not speaking for anybody. If we have like one spot in Lagos where we're protesting, I mean, imagine the numbers. We're all together. We're all doing the same thing at the same time. We're all trying to you know ask for our demands together. If dogs are doing something elsewhere, it is the responsibility of the dogs are not really our concern, to be honest. As far as the dogs don't come near us, when they come near us, I mean, they tried it, they tried it a lot of times. Somebody is going to be buried in Abuja today because dogs killed him. He came out to protest peacefully and dogs killed him. Dogs are the responsibility of another disruptors, are the responsibility of the government. I keep insisting this. It is not our responsibility. If they are going to take, I mean, other countries, when people protest, you find police units guiding them. You find that police is still trying to restore, make sure that order. 
or that is kept in other places. You, you, you find out that the police and their intelligence unit is trying to gather facts, see who's trying to disrupt and trying to cause damage and trying to cause carnage and everything. Now, I'm not going to act like it's easy or anything, but the police is paid and they have a responsibility to make sure that when peaceful protesters are doing their thing, other elements who are trying to disrupt are checked. So the police cannot do it. What is their job? Why are we paying tax for them? Why are we paying them salaries? Why do they have a job? So even if even if talks are a factor, it is not a factor. I feel like I feel like the, the best we can do is to you know align, make sure that our protests are very distinguished from other, other are very distinct from other um, other forms of um, um, demonstrations and everything. You will see the difference if we are protected. If we are protected by the people who are we are paid to protect us, then other talks and other elements. There are also people who are responsible to, who are, who are supposed to be um, accountable to make sure that those people do not cause damage. If they can't do it, then what's the point? The talks can, can as well come out now. They don't need the cover of NSAS protests. Can as well come out now. What would you also say to those people who have lost uh, property and their sources of livelihood to looting and the violence and the destruction? Uh, that took place um, you know, in the last couple of days. Um, a lot of people are uh, in tears. Um, what would your thoughts be to, to those people? It, it, as, as, a, as a businessman and an entrepreneur, I, I, I mean, my heart, my heart goes out to them. I am I'm very sorry it happened. Um, I'm very, very sorry it happened. Um, but spa, and, and again, this is, this is um, not me saying everybody's reality is different because not all not all, not all um, businesses have the same financial model or backing as some other businesses. But their message was, I mean, it had to rebuild, but it even had to rebuild the nation. And that mindset, that mindset was very, very um, um, inspiring. Um, it was sad. It is sad. I feel sorry for them. And there are different funds and everything that have been put in place to, you know, um, cushion the effect of that. They're still going to be lost because even if they give you... Um, I mean, they give you back everything, even if you had insurance or you go back everything you lost. This period where you're not doing business is still, you know, it's still a loss for you. So, and my heart goes out to them. Um, we're doing this so that tomorrow, if you're, if from your business, you're driving a very good car, SARS will not stop you and kill you. Um, when there's life, there's hope. So, um, um, my, 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 my words are, um, it's, it's sad, it's unfortunate. We are sorry, um, but this is, an indictment on the government. They can't protect, they can't really protect lives and property, and that's part of what we're fighting for. Finally, um, as quickly as you can, share with me where you think the victory uh, truly is um, in this whole process. Victory for me is when a policeman and other public servants are terrified of collecting bribes. They are ter terrified of treating people without the human dignity that are terrified of pointing guns at people. Um, that is the first level of victory for me. Um, victory is when the government realizes that the power belongs to the people and acts like it. Um, I, I think the government is too powerful now. I think the government feels like um, they can do anything and get away with it. And to be honest, it's, it's seeming like, you know, they are proving it day by day by all the things they've done, all the things they've denied. But we are going to get to a point, the victory for me is when we get to a point where before they do anything, they think about the potential backlash and they respect themselves and they treat the citizens with dignity, treat the citizens right. That is the victory for me and we are going to get there. Chidi Okereke, thank you so much for speaking with us. Um, pretty interesting conversation and uh, I'm looking forward to having another one uh, with you as uh, quickly as possible. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.